Hi, this is Hoda Bino from Devil's Eye, just over here with Sun Devil Radio color analyst Kyle Dodd. I think last time you and I talked, uh, gas was still at um, 250 a gallon, but uh, here we are um, at the regular season finale. ASU does beat Stanford 65 to 56. ASU finishes the regular season at 14 and 16, 10 and 10 in Pac-12 play. And Kyle, before we talk about what's next for Arizona State, let's just talk about uh, what we saw here against Stanford. I think we're kind of uh, spoiled to see 20-point uh, wins here at home the last uh, couple a couple of weeks. Um, how would you sum up uh, the victory against Stanford? Really was uh, more of a grind out. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously choppy at times. I mean, both teams uh, turned the ball over, were careless with the ball. A lot of, I thought a lot of the turnovers, ball turnovers that ASU had were just unforced errors, just getting a little sped up. And, you know, senior days are weird, man. The emotion of senior day, not only the guys that are going through it, but your teammates are pulling for you. And it it's always seems to be that type of game. Stanford turnovers, on the other hand, I thought that was a direct result of ASU and their defense. I mean, it's been happening all year, and they really disrupted the offense. And it uh, kept them in the game, to be honest with you. And then finally they broke through, and Marion Jackson had his hand on every basketball in this game, and, and it was just shooting out of the pack. And what a, what a night on his senior night. Yeah, Marion Jackson uh, has four games with six steals uh, in the game, in the game, and two of those games actually happened here at a Sunday uniform. Marion Jackson obviously is lone season at, at, at Arizona State. Started out really slow because of injury, but I think he finished um, on a much stronger note. Uh, I mean, for you, Kyle, was it really just about uh, being healthy that Jackson is playing much better, or have you seen uh, some other differences that maybe a lot of people uh, did not notice the last couple months? I mean, I think honestly, I think a lot of people didn't know how bad his wrist was early in the year, and nobody people even know he had a wrist injury to be honest with you and um i think that was a, a lot of his struggle and I, I came in the ucla game i came into the arena by mistake i thought the game was at uh seven and i do this from time to time and the game was at eight so i was here like four hours early and he was the only one in here just getting shot up after shot up and i just sat here and watched him and i'm like man his stroke is nice i mean he shoots the ball his form's great and he's just making he's just making shot after shot after shot and that was the game i think he had three threes in the first half and it was like something clicked and he he was making plays for everybody and he's a huge reason i think a huge reason him and the emergence of jalen graham is where this team turned it around and doug tamara our great uh, sports information guy gave us a stat just a minute ago he said uh, Marion was the first player since 2010 clay thompson to have 18 points six rebounds six assists and six steals in a game and clay i think clay did it against gonzaga um in 2010 but yeah, what a, what a performance by him, and he's a huge reason um, that the Devils are playing as well as they are right now. Let's talk about the, uh, the other, other senior, uh, Kimani Lawrence. I think there's been anybody consistent almost from game one up until today. I think uh, DJ Horn uh, is, is some, somebody in the conversation. But I think Kimani Lawrence, really in terms of the consistency, uh, really, really was a, a steady Eddie. And obviously with the absence of, uh, of Marcus Bagley, I mean, he's one guy that had to step up. Yeah, Kimani, he, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, – Every year he's kind of changed his game a little bit. When he showed up here, I mean, he was a slasher and an athlete and a shooter. I mean, he had a game-winning three against Mississippi State in Vegas his sophomore year and, and multiple threes. And, um, I mean, if you saw him take a three right now, you'd be like, what is he doing? But, I mean, he's just every year he's he's bulked up. He's gotten stronger. He's de This year he's developed a little jump hook. He, he's so well – he does so well using the basket to protect himself. He can finish over the top. And, I mean, he's just one of those guys that does whatever you need. He always seems up to come, with, come up with the ball at the right time. And, you know, Bobby, I think, said in his media appearance this week that he doesn't even consider him a, uh, a player anymore. He's a friend. And that's cool, man. That's really cool. I, I was joked with him in our postgame show. He was on with us. And I said, man, I, I think you started, like, when I was a senior. You know, he's been here that long. But, uh, but what, a, what a run for Kamani. I'm super proud of him. Uh, sometimes you have, you know, head-scratching stats uh, for all the right reasons. And when you see ASU uh, finishing the regular season at 10 and 10 in Pac-12 play, seven of those wins have come in the last in, in the last eight games. I mean, we talk about like uh, peaking at the right time. I think uh, ASU is a perfect example of that. Yeah, I mean, it's been a couple years uh, here, you know, lately that Bobby Hurley's really got his team going late in the Pac-12 season. A couple years ago, before the the shutdown. I mean, we were heading into the Pac-12 tournament, number three seed, have a bye. They'd won seven in a row, and and you know he's got these guys rolling again. And uh, you know it was Ben Dane Altman who usually hits his teams hot, but you know Coach Hurley did a great job. And I, I said multiple times over the last couple of days, you know, this arguably to me is one of his best coaching jobs because of the you know the adversity that they face, the injuries, 
you know how easy it would be for that team to mail it in and those kids to just say, hey, man, this isn't our year. But those guys battled, man. And, they, and you know, even in that stretch, they play five ranked teams. They go one and four. I was like, no, nah, this is a different team. And then they just broke loose from there. And it's been, it's been awesome to watch. And, I mean, honestly, it's been one of the more fun years in a weird way um, just to how it all kind of went down. You know, when we, like you said, when we talked last, it was like, man, how bad could this get? They can't make shots. And, and now it's like, man, we're playing as good as anybody. So let's let's look to ne next week in Las Vegas in in, in, the, in the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, as we speak right now, it looks like ASU is going to be stuck in that number eight seed because Washington State is just walloping over Oregon. Talk about a team that has really faded down the down the stretch. But uh, now it's not not just the fact, Kyle, that ASU is playing that dreaded Wednesday noon uh, Pacific time game on Wednesday. But now they're also going to play Stanford again. Uh, now I know you can you know sit sit down and debate for hours. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? To play uh, the same team uh, four days later after after you just beat them uh, over here, granted not an overwhelming win by any by any means, but I mean as a player, I mean was that maybe uh, something that you just kind of a little apprehensive about, like trying to beat the same team in a matter of four days? Yeah, I mean it's so rare in college basketball that it happens where you play a team back to back. It's not like you're going into you know NBA like they have series you know to give seven game series, but. You know, I, I don't love it, you know, especially if you're the team that won because, you know, Stanford's going to be, you know, gunning for you. But I also don't they don't mind the matchup. I think the, the Devils obviously have some some matchup um, advantages with Stanford. Obviously, their size is a uh, is a big issue for ASU, but I don't think it really hurts them that much. And the lack of ball handling for Stanford, I think, plays into our hands with the way we guard. And, you know, I think a, a huge, a huge part of, you know, what their success has been is the, obviously the defense and, and I think they can really disrupt Stanford defensively. And last question, if ASU is to pull an Oregon State, so to speak, uh, winning four games in, in, in four days, clinching uh, the NCAA tournament uh, berth, what do you think has to go right for ASU? I mean, obviously, again, they're coming in red hot. I mean, we've been hearing for weeks now, ASU is not the team that you want to face in the Pac-12 tournament. But in, in, in your mind, if you're just looking at the four games, you know, not knowing the other three opponents uh, beyond Stanford, what do you think has to go right for Arizona State and Las Vegas next week? Well, I think they're going to be in ball games with their defense, but uh, I think it comes down to what you know has changed the change the season i think making shots i think you know marion jackson making threes dj horn struggled a little bit late but he's been so good this year you know knocking down shots jay heath is shooting it really well uh, luther muhammad um plays better on the road right now he in which so we're gonna be in vegas i think he'll he'll play well um gaffney's emerged Jalen graham obviously offers a low post threat so i think um uh, we're playing as well as anybody in the in the league and you know arguably the country i mean we're playing really well and it's all matchups i think that's the that's the tough thing and the ability that for asu lately to switch all screens you know at least one through four has been really good defensively so uh, i look for their defense to continue and, and hopefully stay hot well, the Sun Devil team has made things quite interesting in the last couple of months. Let's see if they can continue that momentum, and Lady Luck is going to shine on them in Las Vegas in the Pac-12 tournament. For Kyle Dodd, this is Hodor Pino for Devil's Digest.